16, 1987, for the Oral History Project of Historic Madison, I, Lorraine Orchard, am talking with Glenn Wise. She is Mrs. John E. Wise, W-I-S-E. Her first name is Glenn, G-L-E-N-N. Um, Glenn, I think first, before we begin talking, I'd like to ask you a little bit about your background. Where you grew up, uh, where you went to school, what degrees you have, anything you want to say about that. Well, for eight years, I was an only child, probably badly spoiled. Oh, no. <laughs> But then I was fortunate enough to have a brother, and uh, but the two of us had all too few years together, unfortunately. Uh, he died at an unhappy earlier age, but uh, we certainly did enjoy our life together. This was in Laval, Wisconsin. Uh, I had been born, of course, in Wyasena, which was not any larger than Laval. Mm. And uh, Wyasena is a small community between Portage and Rio. And uh, my father studied in Milwaukee uh, to become a doctor, and uh, I was the uh, child of a college student, which was most unusual uh, in 1896 when oh. I was born. It was. And uh, upon his, when he completed his um, uh, studies, he became, uh, took up the residency in Laval, Wisconsin, where he continued to live for many years and uh, uh, where we enjoyed a happy life. Uh, as I said, I was an only child for eight years, and I was fortunate enough to have a brother. But unfortunately, uh, the eight years proved a longer uh, distance than, I, than was really good, because by the time we might have been more compatible. I began leaving, going away to further my education. Mm -hmm. And uh, where did you go to school? I, of course, uh, had eight years. I had 10 years of grade school, I suppose you would call it, in Laval. Mm -hmm. They called it uh, two years of high school, although I have to say it really lacked science or uh, anything with labs or mm -hmm. so on but so but I had two years uh, in Re in uh, Reedsburg I graduated from Reedsburg High School in 1913 then followed uh, four years at Milwaukee Downer College uh, which was very different uh, because during my uh, last two years of high school, I uh, did not live at home. I would go down to Reedsburg Monday morning. Yes. Come in. Uh, as I say, I would go down to Reedsburg Monday morning and uh, then return Friday night, uh, staying, spending the week uh, in Reedsburg. How big was Milwaukee Downer? Do you remember? Uh, like several hundred? Around or 300. I hope that I'm correct. Well, I had an idea, too, it was in that group. Hmm? I thought it was about that, but I mm -hmm. wasn't sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I uh, am trying to think. 
I don't even, I'm ashamed to say, I don't remember how many were in my graduating class. Did you have largely a liberal arts program? Yes. Uh -huh. yes uh, during my senior year, I was discovered that I was a little deficient in science. And uh, so it, <laughs> to make up for that, uh, we uh, had a trip to the sand dunes. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> fun. <laughs> Hardly a, a day in, <laughs> on the shore of Lake Michigan, uh, <laughs> east of Chicago, would you? but we had a great day and <laughs> Uh, except I recall at the time, I, it didn't appeal to me because uh, we had had, uh, it had been May Day at the college and uh, we had, things had been very gay and lively and uh, this was just a one day trip. We had to leave early and uh, we didn't, uh, we dressed very casually uh, for the train journey from Milwaukee down to Chicago, and uh, but it was a it was a good day on the dunes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Um, then when you finished at Milwaukee Downer, you came to Wisconsin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Uh, very different of course, with Milwaukee oh, yeah. Downer being only women. Mm -hmm. And it was more like my high school days when I was away from home five days of the week and uh, no one to, uh, really no one to put a curb on my <laughs> activity. <laughs> uh, but uh, I survived. Well, I think so. <laughs> Uh, what did you major in? Mathematics, really. Hmm. Uh, from In college, I became interested in uh, econ. And uh, while I had a major in math, a minor in econ, I uh, worked out. Uh, but I don't really remember much uh, econ in high school. No. Glenn, um, because we both belong to the same sorority, I'd like to ask you about your joining Alpha Xi Delta. I believe you came to Wisconsin, as you've said, as a graduate student. Yes, uh, and uh, it happened that I had two cousins who were then in the university and members of Alpha Xi Delta. I was uh, very pleased to be rushed by the sorority and uh, though I did not necessarily think I would be in Madison or in the university uh, very many years, I was uh, delighted to become a member and uh, have greatly enjoyed my many years and have felt very fortunate that I was early invited to become a member and have enjoyed the association tremendously. You have been one of our most valued members. Anybody knows that. Now, back to your economics experience. In graduate school, you became interested in economics. Whom did you work with? I worked uh, with uh, Professor Kiekhofer and Dr. Ely. I, uh, of course, was a was a uh, student, and as I said, I had entered here as a on a so-called scholarship. I 
think that it was th that the university uh, gave Milwaukee Dahmer the privilege of appointing someone under a scholarship. I think it was seventy-five dollars, uh, and uh, when I entered simply as a student, uh, there was um, I don't recall her name, but she had been the secretary of the uh, department, working particularly with Dr. with, um, oh, what was Mr. Dr. Ely's name? Huh? Oh, Richard T. Ely. Oh, Richard, <laughs> oh, okay. And, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, Professor Kikofer. But then uh, she left, and strangely, uh, uh, Professor Kikofer asked if I would take her position. Well, it meant that uh, I would not be able to get a master's degree in the one year that I was had entered here, supposedly, to get. So I, of course, asked Milwaukee Downer, well, what about this? Should I accept this position? They couldn't wait to tell me definitely. <laughs> well, that was really an honor. And um, what sort of responsibilities did you have? Oh, I don't think very... Uh, I did not uh, conduct classes. Of course, Econ 1A and 1B were the largest uh, lecture courses in the university in those days. And uh, it was general administration uh, of the uh, lectures, which were two lectures a week, and then the rest divided into uh, sections. And it was just the administration of a large group of students in uh, uh, both semesters, 1A and 1B. Well, you were certainly connected with two famous people. They were famous economists that you worked with, yes. believe me. Well, and don't forget John R. Commons. Right. <laughs> uh, uh, in those days, uh, candidates for master's degrees, uh, I think they had to write a dissertation. Or, but anyhow, uh, I was uh, told that I had to, to meet the committee and uh, to see whether or not uh, I would be awarded a, a master's degree. My committee was Richard T. Ely, John R. Commons, and William A. Scott. If you passed that, you did well. <laughs> and I'm sure you did pass it. Well, it was, <laughs> it was a delightful experience. Good. Uh, I remember that... Uh, it was the second year before I was granted the master's. I hadn't taken enough courses in, after I assumed the secretary of, of the department. And uh, as I, when I listed the courses, I remember Professor Commons saying, list, have he heard me list the courses? All the stations on the Pennsylvania line. <laughs> But it was, it was a most interesting time. How long did you work at the university? Oh, Lorraine, uh, that was 1914. I graduated, yeah, well, I grew until I was married in 1924. So Seven years. No. Or ten years. Yeah, ten, ten years. Ten years. All right. I want to put in a little plug here to back up about Milwaukee Downer. I'm not sure it got on the tape, but I happen to know that you were the May Queen at Milwaukee Downer. So just in case it didn't get on a little while ago, we'll put that in now and then go back chronologically. <laughs> All right. Well, you married John Wise, whom I remember. Uh, do you want to tell us uh, about his career and something about your husband? Well, he, uh, I was living uh, in the 
Irving, which is no longer in existence, so the buildings were demolished. And uh, it happened that uh, a Milwaukee Downer classmate had uh, also come over here and was here for a year's uh, uh, work. And so I've kind of forgotten just how the connection was made, but uh, someone, a friend of hers, uh, knew my husband's cousin. And uh, uh, Lydia wanted to come here for summer school, and uh, the uh, connection was made, and John Wise met her at the station and brought her over so she could live in the apartment in the Irving where I lived with other friends. And uh, I don't know whether it's of great interest or not, but uh, at least it just happened that there was a little mouse that wasn't supposed to be in our apartment. <laughs> and it put in an appearance just before our new uh, occupant and John were to arrive and I was on top of the piano. <laughs> so that's how I met my husband. Right. <laughs> oh. um, was he an engineer, am I right? An engineer? Hmm? Was John an engineer? Oh, yes. Yeah, he was an electrical engineer, and uh, he had, uh, had been in service and uh, was back with the others who had, he had been overseas and, and uh, came back. So uh, it was, I was very fortunate to have met him mm -hmm. very, very soon. And he worked for the state didn't he not? Not at that time. Oh, he not was then. at the university. I see. And, oh. uh, but then he became uh, uh, in the engineering department, in electrical engineering, and uh, chairman of the um, hmm. Oh, golly. Well, it's It'll standards come lab. It'll come oh. to me. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Right. Well, you were married, hmm? you were married, and you had a son, John. Yes. All right. Junior. Uh, junior. Okay. And um, I'd like to ask you a little bit, you probably lived in other places, but when I really got to know you, you were living in the Eaton Ridge neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Can you mention some of your neighbors? Oh, I will, of course. <laughs> Always long remember. Uh, the Oz Foxes and uh, the uh, Edward Samps and uh, the Cantwells and uh, well, that's and the Don Fellows were right across the street, as were all the others. How how that. What is the fe is the son Don also fellows the one who became a famous actor? That's yes, uh -huh. that's Don. Oh yes, and he's now a, has long been a resident of London. He's I hope he'll come back soon because he and his wife were here with their two daughters uh, uh, a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. and uh, it was delightful to see them. Did the Hibbards live there too on Eaton Ridge, yes, or were they? They were on Hollister. Our uh, they were one block or one a few houses east of us on Hollister, and the uh, I had the name in, right in my mind, and it's gone immediately. Where we had we shared backyards. It'll probably come back to you. Yeah. Was Mr. Hibbard, uh, what was his first name? Professor Hibbard. That's not C.V. Hibbard, is it? Isn't mm -hmm. it? A, it's not C.V. Hibbard, is it? Isn't uh -huh. it a different one? Mm -hmm. Well, that might come to us, too. Mm -hmm. All right. He was a professor in uh, ag 
economics professor of uh, econ mm -hmm. uh, before they before he married uh, the second Mrs. Hibbert. Okay. Well. Uh, if you think of any more you want to add about the neighborhood, I'm sure you've seen changes, and uh, you were near West High School, so I knew you had ties with West, and John went there. Um, are, do you want to make any observations on changes? Glenn, you were exceedingly active in community activities. You're known for your service to the community. You're known for service to the city of Madison, to the state of Wisconsin, and even to the nation. In the city of Madison, you were on many committees. I remember you were president of the Madison, chairman of the Madison Civics Club. You were active in the League of Women Voters and a rather unusual service that you performed, a very important one, was that you served for several years on the City of Madison Park Commission. Do you have any particular recollections of your years on the Park Commission? Um, when you were on the Parks Commission, can you tell us some of the things that you did? Well, uh, well, I was uh, in, working with Inspector Thomas of the Police Department, and uh, we were. I think I may boast that we were instrumental in uh, formulating the bicycle ordinance relating to the proper use of the bicycle in transportation on the city streets. Good. And, uh, and then um, you would have to make decisions about the public parks, wouldn't you? Uh, uh, what sorts of things did you talk about? In, in Oh, I, general conduct in the parks, uh, uh, one thing, uh, what we would properly uh, sell to the general public to help uh, getting um, funds to uh, regulate the parks. Uh, I remember we uh, considered a children's merry-go-round in the parks. I, I think we brought one in that had been in use in uh, some city not far from Madison, and uh, uh, it, it was not, that was not brought in to raise any money for the parks, but it was for the children's enjoyment. But uh, unfortunately, I don't think it lasted very long. Was that at Vilas Park? Yeah. Um, what about it? Did you have much vandalism to contend with? Or is vandalism relatively recent? I think I can safely say that it's relatively recent. I don't recall, that when, for instance, when we had the merry-go-round, I don't recall that uh, there was danger from vandalism. And uh, it, it certainly would lend itself to that if uh, mm -hmm. the people had been so inclined. Um, can you roughly date the time you were on the Park Commission? Just 
like the 1930s, 40s, or just roughly? Yeah. Well, I was married in 24, and uh, I would say the 30s, 30s and uh, early 30s and 40s. Then I know you were president of the Madison Civics Club, and I suppose you did PTA work. Oh, I was president of Randall PTA. West High, too, or? No. It, but you were? I don't, no, I wasn't. Uh, How did you miss? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, oh, I remember talking at some meeting at, when West High had done something, uh, got, had, uh, West High uh, organization was a, had done something, won honors, and uh, I remember that recalling when the uh, ground was broken for West High, and uh, that I used to wheel my son around and watch West High from the very beginning. I know it opened in the fall of 1930, and I remember when West was being planned, people said, oh, there will never be enough children to go to that school. Why put a school way out there? Which seems utterly incredible now. Mm -hmm. All right, well, when did you... Uh I went, Kate taught in West High. Well, I went to West High as a student first, mm -hmm. and I graduated in mid-year of 1934. Mm -hmm. Then when I finished at the university, I went right back to teach mm -hmm. in 1938 mm -hmm. and taught until December of 1947. Mm -hmm. Our son Bruce was born mm -hmm. in 48. You and were a very honored teacher at West well, High. Well, I loved it. What did you, uh, what was the honor that you received? Oh, um, There was something special. Well, yes, um, I don't quite know how to label it. Actually, I had two teaching careers. I went back then part-time in 1963 and retired in 1982. But one year, four of us received a citywide honor for merit, something like mm -hmm. that. It was very nice. Yeah. We were all surprised. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, um, now, in the state, you received a great distinction, and I'd like you to tell about it, at holding a state office. Well, uh, of course, um, Fred Zimmerman had been Secretary of State for uh, 14 terms, good heavens. And uh, he had uh, run, I think, once for governor, but he didn't, uh, wasn't successful. But he did continue as Secretary of State. And uh, when his, upon his death, uh, it was incumbent upon the governor to appoint someone to uh, fill, fulfill the term. And uh, uh, Governor Kohler and Mrs. Kohler had been in Europe and they were in Spain when uh, Fred Zimmerman passed away. And I well remember the afternoon of New Year's Eve when uh, the governor had called me to ask if I would come down to the office and uh, I had been very interested in getting women running for office in the state and I assumed he was going to talk to me about someone whom he could appoint <laughs> and I of course was ready with suggestions 
but uh, he said uh, he was appointing me, and I protested. But he said, no, if I wouldn't take it, he wouldn't give it to any other one. Well, this, we were going to a New Year's Eve party, and uh, he said he, that was it. <laughs> but uh, he would announce it the next morning, and I begged him to find somebody. But uh, I, of course, told my husband, but I can't say that, that we enjoyed having that on our minds <laughs> at the New Year's Eve party. <laughs> but uh, early the next morning, of course, I was had calls from the press that I had been appointed Secretary of State. Well, uh, do you recall the year, or the, the year, do you remember the year that that was? Um, if you think about it, we'll go back and pick mm -hmm. it up. All right. And um, now, am I right? Were you the first constitutional officer who was a woman in the state? Am I right about that? I, I think so, Lorraine. Mm -hmm. I feel quite, I don't think, I think that's right. It seems to me at the time that, as I remember the articles in the paper. Yeah. First woman constitutional The first officer. woman constitutional officer. Yeah. I, I, I think mm -hmm. that's correct. Well, I do too. And um, maybe one of us will be able to date it and we'll go back and pick that up. Oh, right. I'm recalling that my granddaughter, a picture of my granddaughter in the paper who was, if she were two years old at the time, and she say she's if that was 28 years ago, that would have been what in the 60s. Would that have been yes. reasonable? Um, 28, yes. Um, or 1959, 1960, right I, there. I think that's right probably. about in there. Good. Well, you were uh, doing a lot for the cause of women long before we started having parades and uh, getting a little more vocal. <laughs> All right. Now, you were known to a lot of people around here as Mrs. Republican. And uh, did you do anything for the National Party? Go to any conventions or? Oh, I was, uh, I was secretary of the National Federation of Republican Women. Were you ever on a committee for platform or anything like that? Or any kind of national committee that you can remember? Not that I can name them, but I certainly was. All right. <laughs> well, in the back of my mind, and I'm not sure either, I thought you had something to do with the platform one year. And uh, Oh, I was on platform. I was at the national convention, and I was on the platform committee. That's and uh, it's uh, been especially interesting to me because uh, the chairman of the uh, of a small group that I was a member of is the uh, uh, former Senatory Tower, who is now uh, daily on the paper and it's causing right. me to remember yes times. All right. Glenn, with your broad background now, do you have anything in general that you would like to say about participation in government or um, the role of women? Well, I, I certainly have tried to get uh, women interested in as many ways as they can. Uh, they can't, not everyone can uh, uh, leave home and family, but there are ways in, that they can serve without leaving, serve in their own community, their daily lives. And uh, then as their needs for children, the being with children uh, get easier. They certainly want to keep them 
active. I'm delighted whenever I see somebody that's coming up along the way and coming to the legislature and helping us. Well, thank you. And you've been a good role model for us. If we could all do as much as you've done, this would be a better world. Oh, my. <laughs> and we appreciate it. Well, thank you, but you're much too fulsome in your praise. <laughs> <laughs>